smoking little Balkan Supreme in a Savinelli, but it's totally unmarked. I like this shape though. It's kind of a perfect uh, thick half bent, pretty thick walls. It's good. Sometimes Savinelli's are a little florid for me, you know, they're a little overstyled if you ask me. I like just basic stuff usually. To each their own. Out in the woods, doing a little tree surveying. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like smoking a pipe out in the woods. And it's real wet, so there's no danger here. But uh, just going about your business and smoking a pipe is just like, oh, this feels good. So we all go through periods, you know, where we're just like overwhelmed with everything, you know. And it's our own doing. We either take too much on, say yes too much, <laughs> or, uh, or procrastinate and don't get it done and then it builds up. So... So, you know, everything ebbs and flows, and it just, like the past month, it's just been that way for me. So, not a lot of headspace for making a video or something like that. But my solution to that is to, my solution to everything, <laughs> is to uh, try and Focus down onto the moment. Right now. This is all there is. You know, everything else is either a dream, a fantasy, or a memory, right? Except for that little nugget of presentness. Now the ascetics will say, well, you know, what is that present moment? And that's an interesting discussion. It gets kind of esoteric. But I think for every man, it is, we just don't get there enough, so this is the present moment. And uh, pipe smoking helps with that, actually. I mean, it kind of, I think men are like that. Uh, we tend to need a little distraction, whether we're doing something, an activity, uh, you name it. Uh, working on the car, mowing the yard, uh, a carpentry project. And then we can kind of think. You know, it kind of takes part of your mind away and occupies it over there, which leaves a little bandwidth for just being present. That's my experience, and you may be different, I don't know. But that is how I get a handle on my crazy to-do list, mostly at work. But there's <laughs> to-do lists everywhere if you choose to make them. The boat needs a lot of stuff done. Uh, the house needs stuff done. I just heard something crash in the woods there. Might just have been a branch falling down. Might be a cougar stalking me. <laughs> Might be a black bear. Hmm. I don't hear anything else. So. so, anyway, back to the present moment. <laughs> that was kind of a present moment. Oh. Um, so that's how I do it. And, and uh, but I need to kind of filter out stuff. Um, so I have that, kind of like clearing off your desk, so you have a little workspace. So you can focus on that. So that's, that's what I've been doing. And it's, 
as always, it, that's what it takes for me. So, um, I rem I had a conversation with a coworker of mine where uh, <laughs> there's a lot of backstory about, it. but uh, she had some friends, women friends, and um, there was some diagnosis. I forget what it was. And they ended up taking some testosterone. And it was like, boom. They suddenly, this is secondhand, almost thirdhand information, so, were able to focus. Focus on individual tasks. They said, and this was what I found interesting, that, uh, before that, everything came in at the same volume, at the same intensity. I mean, everything, every little thing, every conversation, everything. And when they were on that uh, testosterone regime, and it wasn't extreme, it was, uh, maybe it had to do with cancer, I forget. But uh, they said, oh my God, I get it with men. How they can just, like, focus on something. And not be just overwhelmed with the fire flow of information and stuff and inputs and memories and strategizing and speculating and everything comes in at the same intensity. So I think as men, that can be a fault um, where we're less empathetic maybe, I don't know. Um, but it can be useful too productivity wise so uh, if that's a thing in fact and not just like a wild speculation but, but anyway that ties back into being able to just like clear your little workspace a square foot of open space that is the present moment and then you put something in that present moment and you work on that and focus on that and get that done so that's what I've been doing, and checking off my to-do list. Uh, yeah. So I have more of that to do today, but it's been a week of that, and a month of that. Well, it's been a month of procrastination before that, but um, yeah. So I, uh, I don't know, my work life, uh, which I love, I love my job, I love it, but uh, when you're good at something, you tend to be pretty smooth at it, and it looks pretty effortless from the outside, even though you've spent years building up the foundations for that smoothness. Um, like I have thousands of directories of data. I'm a map guy, I do GIS. And so I collect uh, geodata. And so, if I can remember where I put it, um, it's there when I need it. And so people say, you know, I need to make a map about this. And, and if I had to start from scratch, it'd be like, oh. <laughs> you know, that's a 10 hour job to find the data, to convert the data, whatever it needs. And instead, if I remember where it is, um, then I can call it up, make a map that shows that every map tells a story so you're telling somebody's story a GIS person is is simply a, a storyteller and using maps to do it so so it looks kind of effortless so people think oh well you're not doing very much are you so here why don't you do this as well you know we need this done so then they keep piling stuff on your plate. And I think uh, these days where there are fewer admin assistants, um, where you have to kind of do your own paperwork, you have to do your own grant reporting, all that stuff, um, yeah, it gets, there's just stuff to do that. <laughs> and of course, if you can't say no, because it's all fun and interesting, then 
you know, you get overloaded. And I have the great flexibility of, unless I have a morning meeting or some field work in the morning or something, I usually come in later in the morning to noon, and then I work through the day where I have people contact and phone call time and meeting time, etc. And then in the evening, I have quiet time when everybody else is, has gone home. And I have the freedom to do that. And so that's a huge plus, and that really helps my productivity. So, um, again, they don't see that I'm there working later. And so they think, oh, yeah, he's just, he doesn't have enough to do. So, so part of any person, any employee's job is to educate the boss on what they're doing and make sure they know what they're doing. Um, you know, realistically, it's just good work politics, too. But, um, but during the day, you know, there's all this, we have an open plan office, and it's just loud, and I have some shooter headphones, like for shooting guns, so they isolate pretty well, but then people walk up and say, hey, and blah, 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 or they just want to chat. You know, or something like that. Or recount something funny. I know Tom would love that, you know. Um, which I do. <laughs> but it's all very distracting. So uh, so I do kind of need that quiet time. I really could use that locked office, but or closed office with a door. But, uh, but you know, I'm, I'm an extrovert. So I'm, no. <laughs> um, but I'm a... I'm an extrovert with some introvert qualities. And so I'm kind of like a, a loner with a lot of friends, you know? So, uh, so the locked, the closed door, that's not my style. But the half day with people and the half day, the other four hours without people, that works. So luckily I have an employer, I'm undermanaged is a great thing um and so yeah i can i can do that uh and i like my job well enough i mean i could retire right now but where's the fun in that i mean yeah i do want to do some more sailing up coast and so forth i have some great books uh to recommend um about the central bc coast uh jim spilsbury I'll get into that in a different video. It's, it's, oh, I'm just enjoying his book so much. Um, Howard White and his Harbor Publishing up in Pender Harbor, B.C. Wow, what a great um, bibliography of titles that they have published. Fantastic, fantastic. So, anyway... Um, you know, as usual, just some thoughts. But that's uh, that's how I kind of am able to do what I do. I'm 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 on the outskirts of mm, work life in the sense that I'm just not I'm I'm engaged in a a busy office, but um, but I'm on the periphery of it, and I like that. So it's by choice. Yeah, if I had to do a nine to five. I'd probably retire. So, yeah. But then I get to come out to the woods and do field work, you know. And that is pretty darn great. And there's a little bit of sunshine. It's been pretty wet. But spring is in the air. Things are budding out. Life is good. Life is very good. Once again, I come down to the present moment. You know, that's where life is happening. Anything else is just in your head. And honestly, the present moment is interpreted through our... the whole rest of our life and our experiences and so forth. But, um, 
But that is where life happens. The other is just in your head. <laughs>